a five minute limit. Councilman Van Bramer. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Prendergast, you uh, mentioned that you uh, uh, were with the MTA obviously for many years and then went away. While you were there in the 90s, uh, you had situation rooms, uh, but now you don't. Uh, when did you start back uh, in your current tenure, in your current position? December 1st, 19, uh, 2009. Right. So you had situation rooms while you were with the MTA in the 90s, and then you came back in this very important position uh, in 2009. Did you, at that time, assess your snow preparedness and emergency responses? We had two. We had two storms uh, that were of relative significance in 2009-2010 winter, and we handled them very well. No, that's not the, the question. No, no, and so I did not look and do a detailed review of the procedures and whether they set up a situation room. So that, that's, that's the answer to your question. Right. So it was in the observations of how we were responding to this particular storm that both Mr. Bianco and I noted the fact that we did not have a situation room in Linsley Command Center. Don't you think that's a failure? of leadership and preparation that when you took over uh, the helm on your return in 2009 that you did not do that? We had a winter operations plan. The winter operations plan was reviewed. I read it uh, and it called for those things. Uh, so from that standpoint, I thought the process and procedures were in place. Did you not? What you do, what you do learn at the longer you're at the helm and you come back to an organization, and one of the things that you can assume is that the organization remained where it was when you left it, uh, and I, and, I, and I, I probably should have looked closer. Well, with all due respect, I think we should avoid assumptions and actually do the necessary work to make sure that the processes are in place to handle emergencies. And I think you didn't do that because when you looked at the, uh, the emergency preparedness, you either didn't notice that situation rooms had been dropped or you noticed it and didn't do anything. We didn't notice it until we saw it not in practice. <laughs> Too late. Yes, absolutely. Right. So it's not like there wasn't a lot of activity going on in 2010 in terms of budget cuts, service revisions, signal maintenance, falsification records, and things like that. I'm still accountable for my job. Right. I think we would all acknowledge all of those things you're talking about, but it's still unacceptable that you didn't notice that situation rooms were not in practice and you didn't do anything to get them into practice until you saw a blizzard which paralyzed the system. It, it, if, if I may, um, as the head of subways, I'm actually the individual that has the final sign off on, on the winter plan. And I did, in fact, read that plan in, in, in many times uh, uh, before the winter. And it does call for the implementation of a uh, storm center, uh, a situation room. Um, it wasn't until that evening, and we have a room actually in our command center that is called the situation room. It just was not equipped to implement that night. Today, that room is fully equipped, and uh, when we need to implement it, we can implement it within minutes. Uh, but, but that particular night, although it was called for in the plan, we were not able to open it. It just wasn't ready. I appreciate that. You respond, you report to Mr. Prendergast. Yes, sir. Uh, so ultimately, it's Mr. Prendergast who's overseeing yourself. But I feel responsible for the subways. I appreciate your honesty. Uh, someone mentioned that in 1966, during the blackout, there was immediate communication to make sure that the uh, trains went into the stations and there wasn't uh, 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 more uh, inconvenience or even danger to the customers. Uh, it seems shocking to me that we were able to communicate better in 1966 than we were in 2010 uh, about an emergency. Uh, that in 1966 came on short notice, but this one where we had far more notification is probably one of the few instances where communication was better 44 years ago than it was today. Um, how can you account for that? The cir circumstances were totally different. The system operator sees power coming in in a singular location and he could see what was coming at the transit authority and then he could make one phone call. Uh, the process I was talking about is the importance of having information that you can take a look across the entire system and see not just symptoms, but symptoms that are building to a larger problem at large. And that's what failed here, failed here, because if you had a situation room, it's more likely than not, you see people be processing, okay, we're starting to have trains being, uh, having experiencing problems, power problems on the sea beach, on the Brighton beach, and on the Rockaways. We ought to be starting to think about curtailing service. That was the example I was given. Uh, you also mentioned that there, uh, let me see if I get this right, there's no 
blizzard level response uh, for buses and subways. You had uh, uh, responses for lower levels of, of snow and or storm and or emergency. Is that correct? Do I have that right? That's correct. And where, where the big distinction is, is when you get into the blizzards and you get into the high rate of accumulations and the drifting snow, you really have to get on the footing of starting to think about curtailing service and suspending service. But and that's, just, that's counter to the nature of the transit authority over the years. But can I just ask, what's the point of having a blizzard, uh, a storm level responses if you don't have anything that addresses the highest level of storm? That's why we need to add that level. There's, we agree with you, totally. But it didn't occur to anyone that They happen so infrequently. The last time we had a blizzard of this nature was 1996. But they happen. Um, what, what became uh, clear in this particular situation is while our plan four calls for the ability to begin to thin back service, to hold back service, and possibly suspend service, it didn't really give anyone in the system the criteria of, of how to begin that. Now that's not saying that we, we don't have that know-how, we certainly do. What we, need to, what we need to have between our local storm fighting centers out in the field, between the, uh, the, the dispatchers within our rail control center, and now with the, the strategic crew that we have assembled uh, within this uh, incident command center, is the ability to start seeing the early signs and symptoms that, that we know to look for that perhaps say we better thin back service, cut back service, we're temporarily suspend the line until we get some snow fighting equipment out there. Those signs and symptoms are what we believe are going to be in this plan five because you know we're talking about storms that have high winds. We're talking about storms where you know you have significant snowfall per hour, storms where um, you know we have uh, lots of drifting going on. That's not the typical storm we encounter here and that calls for new measures. And just in the interest of time to, to get to my colleagues, I have one last quick question about Very quickly. I'm sorry, which is uh, uh, you mentioned some of the buses were stuck for hours, but the truth is many of the buses were stuck for days. Uh, uh, Linda Schmidt from Fox 5 was with me on Broadway in Woodside, Queens, where there were several buses stuck for days, several days. How is it that you couldn't get to your buses, I'm assuming they're expensive pieces of equipment, but they were left out in the streets unattended for days? Yeah, the nature of this storm, basically, and there were a lot of those scenarios where our operators went down tertiary streets on our routes, and again, there wasn't a traction issue where chains would have helped them. Uh, when a car became um, unmanned, so to speak, we, we couldn't get past that vehicle, and we stayed there for hours, and the snow completely embanked us. Um, uh, Monday morning, we made a concerted effort with the employees that showed up for work to go out and make reliefs of those operators who were stuck with those buses. In many cases, we just could not, until we could get, could not get to those buses until we got heavy equipment like payloaders and tow trucks to pull them out. That, that, thank you, Council.